FDR came from an aristocratic family. Uh, he was a cousin of Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, he was to the manor born, but he was also a man of the people. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was born in Hyde Park, New York on January 30th, 1882. He was an only child. In 1900, Roosevelt entered Harvard University, where he became romantically involved with his fifth cousin. Roosevelt had met Eleanor Roosevelt when they were children, and then they reconnected when he was a student at, uh, at Harvard. They married quite young, and they had five children in a short amount of time. FDR entered public service by running for and winning the New York State Senate seat in 1910. Later, President Wilson appointed him Assistant Secretary of the Navy. In 1920, Roosevelt ran for vice president on the Democratic ticket. It was a devastating loss, one of the biggest landslides in history. In 1921, at age 39, FDR contracted polio, and it forever changed his life. He had been vigorous as John F. Kennedy and, and being a great athlete, and suddenly he couldn't do any of that. A lot of people were not aware of just how paralyzed he was. They knew that he had a, leg difficulties, but that he couldn't walk at all because there were no pictures of him, you know, in that wheelchair. In 1932, Roosevelt was elected president of the United States. The country was in the midst of the worst economic depression it had ever seen. Within his first hundred days in office, Roosevelt began the New Deal, a series of economic programs focused on relief, recovery, and reform. Financial markets were in freefall. FDR came into office and said, we're going to have to deal with this. He said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. FDR knew exactly when to give voice to the American people, give them hope. And he had the genius of doing these uh, radio fireside chats. When Roosevelt came in, it was almost as though he turned things around by the, just by the force of his personality. By 1939, the world was on the brink of war. Hostilities in Europe and Asia were well underway. FDR was a student of military affairs. So during the late 1930s, when he could see what was going on in Europe, he came up with the phrase that America will be the arsenal for democracy. He very skillfully played the isolationist, saying this is not America's war. But at the same time, in the back rooms of the White House, they were preparing the arsenal for democracy. FDR was able to build support for the war by introducing the four freedoms. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from fear, and freedom from want. These became, in many ways, the ideological justification for the United States' entry on the side of the Allies. On December 8, 1941, Congress declared war on Japan. Germany and Italy then declared war on the United States. America had entered World War II anti-war sentiment uh, dissolved overnight in this country and we were very much behind uh, the war. It is the greatest single event in the history of mankind, World War II. It was fought on six of the seven continents. 50 million people perished. The United States, Great Britain, and the Western Allies were aligned with Russia to try to crush Nazi Germany, Italy, and Japan. In 1944, Roosevelt was in terrible health. Roosevelt ran for the fourth term because he believed the country needed a continuity of leadership. He himself said that you don't change horses in the middle of the stream. As long as the war was going on, Roosevelt believed he needed to stay in office. On April 12, 1945, less than three months after beginning his fourth term, Franklin Roosevelt died at Warm Springs, Georgia. He was the longest serving U.S. president in history. He was the leader of this country, and when he died, no one was prepared for it. The war was winding down at that point. But just when there's a big light at the end of the tunnel, they lose their voice, their leader, the man who has been a symbol of all that is great about the country. There was that great phrase that when he died and the train was going back to Washington, there was a man standing there, a very poor man, and uh, someone said, did you know him? And he said, I didn't know him, but he knew me. That kind of summed up FDR.